Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, today we're going to do a little rambling Russ. It's been a while since I've done a video, quite honestly, about three weeks, which is very unusual for me. It's about as long as I've ever gone. But that's because, uh, if you don't know, I actually have COPD. And quite honestly, about three weeks ago, it got me good for the first time in four years. So I did go down for the count. It's taken me this long to get back to a point where I actually feel like doing a video again. So I've been in and out of the shop, but not a whole lot. And I've done a few little things and tried to do some new projects. But anyway, hopefully now I'm back. And uh, I just wanted to, to let you know that it's made me realize that when I was young, I used to think I was indestructible. Well, now I figured it out that I'm actually just invincible. So anyway... Uh, Thank you for your concerns. Uh, the, I want to thank all my subs and uh, my email people, people that have sent me emails, because I'm getting a lot in there. And it's just really had an uptick in the last 60 days. Just huge. So I want to thank and welcome all my new subscribers. I have lots of past videos. I've been trying to, to redo that a little bit. I've actually made a couple of new playlists. Uh, I didn't realize it till I got looking at it the other day that my pocket hole joinery, I've actually done nine videos on that, which I was shocked when I realized it. So I actually made a playlist of all the pocket hole joinery videos. I also made one on my gripper finally too, because I had a bunch of those and people were asking me, well, where's the video on that? Where's the video on that? Because if you just go to my channel and look through the stuff it's probably hard to find that especially now i've been doing this for over two years and there's a lot of videos out there i'd say easily over 250 videos so uh the lead playlist should really help a lot and i'll probably be doing other playlists as i go along too so anyway just a food for thought um also i had gotten a couple of emails one of them was from larry galt a while back and I just wanted to thank him for the email, but most importantly, let you know that he sent me the email was about my OTB Vice. After he watched my last OTB Vice video from the other day, a uh, month ago, whenever it was, he went out in his shop and made two of them. And he sent me some videos showing how he uses them. And it's actually very cool. If you want to see those pictures, send me your email address or leave it in the comments to my email address. And... I will send you those pictures so you can see what he did. They're actually kind of interesting. Also, I was contacted by somebody named Jürgen Scherp. I hope I pronounced that right. He's a Deutschlander. And he sent me a video about, it had to do with my marble drawer slides. If you remember, I had made two different style drawer slides. And he, this one here was the one where the marble stayed inside the container so it makes it a nice self-contained sliding uh door, drawer slide in this case well apparently he's an otb thinker in his own right because he took that idea and he took it to the next level and i thought that was so cool and he sent me he has it out there on the internet he sent me a link to his page where he talks about this and uh if you want to know, I have that link to that page in my description. Now, if you're going to go look at this, two things you need to know. First off, that page in particular is about 40 pages long, so you have to scroll down almost at the bottom. I think page 36 is where that particular item is. And so uh, he has several pictures to show how he took and made his uh, marble uh, support stands. And that was impressive because what made it really unique is he didn't use marbles. He actually went and found uh, practice golf balls, they're called. And I didn't even know they even existed. Um, but I guess they're about an inch and a quarter diameter. And so he took those and that's what he used using this style of drawer slide and made his supports. Uh, if you go see the pictures, you'll see what I'm talking about. They're really very cool. So, but the idea was, is that he actually took what he learned from me and moved it up a step. And I thought that was so cool. In fact, I'm now going to try to get out there and buy some of these plastic or some of these um, uh, practice golf balls because 
Uh, I think that there's a lot of different things we can do with those too. Now that I realize that there is something that is a step up above the marbles. So stay tuned for what I do there because I have some ideas that all of a sudden have taken off simply because he took it to the next uh, level. Jurgen, my hat's off to you. That was definitely an OTB moment. And I'm quite impressed with how you took and ran with my idea and made it even better or different. So if, don't be afraid to check it out. Uh, I'll leave the link. If you do, take your German to English translation book because he is from Germany and everything is in German. So if you want to read it, uh, you better have had to take a translator with you or be able to read German already. So anyway, it's it's worth the trip. The pictures tell you a thousand is worth a thousand words anyway, and you'll see what he did. And it's actually pretty great. I had a pretty good idea what he did when he built those. So Thank you, Jurgen, for sharing that, and hopefully everybody else now will be able to see it and appreciate what you did, too. So, anyway, um, the other thing I want to talk about is some of my old projects in the shop, uh, like my portable power pack uh, using Ryobi batteries. I'm going to try to get that done. The only reason I haven't quite finished that is that I've, uh, I, I'm kind of stuck because I know i got to make wood hinges for it. I made a promise a long time ago to myself that if I was going to make projects for the shop, I would not use store-bought hinges. I have to make my own. So that has kind of held me back slightly, but I'm going to get that done. So that's one of those old projects that I'm still working on. Also, my OSTB, OSB wall and Midasol station, I'm still working on that. And again, the last month, I haven't done a whole lot with it for obvious reasons, but I am going to get that done. I haven't forgot it. I have made some really good improvements on some of the projects, my old projects too. My uh, panel saw, I used it a lot this winter because I was making this wall and having to deal with a lot of OSB sheets. And my panel saw has been wonderful to do that in here. But I did make some really cool improvements on it, and I want to do a video on that pretty quick to show you those improvements. I think you'll like it, and it, maybe it'll help you to be able to set up your own uh, panel saw station that you can tear, that you can take down and put up in just a couple of minutes and be able to use it. So uh, stay tuned for that. Now that's coming out pretty quick. As far as new projects, I have been working on several things. Uh, I'm putting together a little vacuum box for lack of a better way to call it that will collect small parts so that if I take my vacuum hose and hook it up on one end it'll have a hose on the other end coming out and I use that to clean up sawdust and things like that like if you got a bunch of sawdust in a in a drawer or in a box that has a bunch of little pieces in it and you're trying to clean the sawdust out if you just take the shop back guess what happens <laughs> there they go so what this little box will do is it'll catch all that little stuff so only the sawdust will go up into the um, shop back still. And then you can open up the box, get your stuff out, and put it back. So uh, it's going to be a pretty handy thing to have around the shop. And the main reason I'm building it is that on my Midasaw station, I do want to make a small parts cutting system for making little small boxes and things and how easy you can do it. Because on there, it, it's actually very easy to cut small pieces and make small boxes and drawers and that. Uh, based on the same idea that you saw from Ted Baldwin. So if you watch any of his videos, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I want to do that. But this little box is part of what I want to do is I want to be able to set that up too. So that as I'm cutting these little tiny pieces... They'll get sucked up into this little box so that they don't get caught up in my doing all this cutting and working. You'll see what I'm talking about when I do that, but that's one of my projects. Um, I also, my OTB Vice, I've been working on a couple of different designs. I want to put some add-on jaws on that little vise because I think that it does pretty good, but I think it could actually be a lot better. And when you see the new ideas I have for the jaws of that vise, you'll start to wonder why you don't have one of your own, quite honestly. So uh, another thing I've been working on is uh, my dado sled from my dado table saw, my dedicated dado saw. I'm making a new sled for that, and it's going to incorporate a lot of the little niceties in that including be able to put an anchor jig on it and take it off pretty quick and use that. And also a uh, finger joint 
for the standard quarter inch blade be able to just pop that on there and use it so it's going to be very versatile table saw sled based on my quarter inch dado stack which is always in that saw so having dedicated saw i decided having a really good table saw sled for that would be worthwhile so i've been working on all that and figuring out all the features i'm going to put on it the other thing is, is i also want to make a dowel maker uh jig that will mount to my table saw so i can make any size dowel i want easily and be able to get it out set it up make a couple of dowels and put it away and be done in less than 10 minutes and have three feet or 20 feet of dowel pretty quickly so the table saw i think is the best place to have that I've seen where they've done it with just a chisel and a drill. I've seen where they've done it on the bandsaw, you know, on the router. But I think the table saw is the best place to do that. And in particular, with a dado stack, will be the best place to make dolls. And we're going to see if that's true when I make that. So that doll maker should be coming pretty quick too, which is something I've been wanting to do. Uh, also, I, as you know, I have a series... Uh, shop uh, notes projects where I go back to shop notes magazine and I've been looking through all theirs and every now and then I get a project that jumps out at me and I, go, I gotta try to make that and I've had several shop notes project well I had been getting the bug lately uh, from a couple of people that are asking me about other ones and I think I'm gonna do another shop one but I've been looking through there if you have a particular shop notes project that you like or interested in and you want to suggest it Leave it in the comments or send it to my email and I'll take a look at that and see. And maybe I can do that, use that. So I'm kind of hunting for a new shop notes project, just so you know. So your input would be helpful. <laughs> um, I think that's everything about my new projects, things that I'm kind of working on. There are some other things, but they're pretty early on. So we'll see where they go. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is that since we were talking about dowels themselves and making a dowel maker, one of my things I have was we're now making the transition from winter back into summer. Well, as you know, in this shop in the wintertime, or in any shop really, if you keep it closed up and heated, the humidity in here will drop off dramatically. And the humidity in this shop in the winter months is probably around 12 to 15 percent constantly. So what happens when you do that? When you take a bit of dowel, you put it in the dowel hole, this is what you get. Loosey goosey. By June or July, I'll have to take my little hammer and tap it down to put it in there. It'll be tight. That's just inherent with bench dogs and with dowels. So a couple of the ways I cured that in the past, as I told you, is I had taken, for one thing, I took all my a lot of my bench dog holes and I drilled a small hole in here and put a quarter inch set screw in from the side so I can screw that down to lock this down in place easily and that works pretty well but also I took and I made some little dowels like this with just PVC pipe on it that I heated up cut it into half inch pieces heated it up with the heat gun and then shoved it down onto the dowel and that gives me a nice perfect dowel like this that I can use with a shoulder so for a shoulder dowel this works pretty well and uh, I like that, but I saw the other day, and I wish I knew who it was, because I've been watching a lot more videos than I've been doing videos lately, as you might know, and he showed a new way of doing it that I really like. Um, sorry, I don't remember your name, who it was. He's somebody that I am subscribed to. It's not just one that I happen to see out there, but he took his doll and he took his coping saw, and he cut a slot into it. To cut a little tab area off of loose. Came down most of the way down. Then he stuck a piece of wood in here to push the tab out. Which is what I did. I just used pieces of veneer one at a time. I stuck them in there with crazy glue. Until I got it to where it started to push this out. Now this doll is always nice and tight in here. Once you get this in here, right at this area here where it's pushing out, you do have to sand this down some until it fits in there nicely. But having this little tab on there, that's a great idea for a bench dog. So I'm probably going to make a lot more of these, which is why I want the doll maker, because I'm going to make my own bench dog uh, dowels. 
from that and have them all be consistent sizes. One thing I have learned is that when you buy from the big box stores, they're not all the same size. In fact, it depends on what day you go in as to what size they are. So sometimes I have to actually sand them down to start using them. Sometimes they just start off like this, some some of the stuff, or it's loosey-goosey. So anyway, this is kind of nice having this new dowel. It's a great idea that I wanted to share with you real quick, a great tip. So anyway, if you have any questions about that or anything that we talked about here today, please leave it in the comments. Uh, if you have any suggestions, as I mentioned, about something or you want to see, let me know. I'm open to anything. And if you take any of my projects and take them to the next level, please share them because I'm sure everybody else would be interested in what you did with it, just like Jurgen did. So thank you again, Jurgen, for what you did. I really appreciate that. That was so cool that you took that to the next level. So uh, if you have any, uh, if you like this video um, or you learned something here, hit that like button. It helps me know that I'm doing the right thing. Uh, most importantly, though, please come back again because contrary to popular belief, I'm nowhere near done. And I will see you again, hopefully a lot sooner than the last time. So we'll see you again soon. Thanks. And you have a good day.